Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and as you probably know I'm the airline pilot. Today we're gonna discuss this young gentleman and what he did to his airplane. Let's go! His name is Trevor Jacob and he's some sort of sportsman. He also has his YouTube channel with many subscribers and views and he used to present the United States in Winter Olympics back in 2013. He is a snowboarder or something like that but there are lots of activities on his channel except of snowboarding he's also a pilot skydiver and many more i would call him adventure guy and everything he's doing on youtube channel is connected to adventures so a couple of weeks ago he posted the video it's called i crashed my plane and recently he edited this video however internet remembers everything and i have the full video and firstly i saw this video on a small channel called triton tv and uh, the guy interviewed the real pilot and the interview is one hour with something, but real nice to watch it. Bum, bum. Here we have some sort of intro. I'm over the mountains and I fucked out an engine out. So, as you saw, <laughs> the guy jumped from the plane and he said he had the engine failure and the airplane just uncontrollably crashed into terrain. He stated that on November 21st I took off uh, to Sierra Nevada mountains to spread my best friend Johnny's strangers ashes uh, yeah. the long story it's on his channel I'll put the link to his channel by the way and you may check all the story about his friend he lost his life while uh, actually skydiving uh, somewhere in Switzerland uh, as far as I understood I plan to document the entire trip and make a video sharing the adventure during the flight I experienced an engine failure over some mountains yeah some mountains it was flying over the mountains area of course there are not many places where you can land the airplane without the engine how so he just jumped out of the plane but I personally think my friends that it wasn't the engine failure and he just shut it down the engine and jumped from the plane and later you will understand why yes I may be wrong and FAA is investigating the story and I hope they'll find out whether it's hoax or truth that that's what he says, uh, engine failure. There was no safe place to land and actually it's kind of controversial state my friends because there were quite a few places where you can land this short takeoff and land performance airplane. I jumped from the plane and deployed my parachute, yes. I notified the FAA and the NTSB immediately. Uh, I hope so. I didn't think I would have the courage to share this footage, but I feel a lot of pilots can learn from my experience. Wow, I hope we can learn how to deal with engine failure in the mountain area. Let's see, I am eager to watch this video. Please fly with a parachute, my friends. Going a little bit ahead, there are not a lot of pilots who wear shoots uh, during their flying on the gen in general aviation. For military, yes, you have ejection seat, but mostly for general aviation, if it's not the aerobatic flights or skydiving flights, we do not wear the parachutes. You may say we, since you are an airline pilot, but my friends, just recently, one year ago, I restored my single engine piston rating so I may speak from general aviation as well. Bum, bum. Okay, now you see Mr. Jacob together with his aircraft. By the way, this aircraft is BL-65, the aircraft, uh, quite nice planes, but made in 1940. Still reliable if you maintain it. It's factory-made airplane, my friend, so you cannot put your own modifications according to FAA regulations. But if you have experimental type of the airplane, custom-made airplane, it also can get the registration registration number and you can put your own uh, thoughts on that plane let's say you can swap engines and do whatever you actually want to do in the safe gap but if it is a factory made airplane as this one so you need to do uh, to perform all the maintenance in certified facilities 
and do only the things that requires uh, according to maintenance manual for the specific airplane um, so you cannot do uh, really uh, lots of stuff on your own there especially uh, mounting the GoPro cameras as uh, this guy did Mr. Jacob did uh, he put GoPros on one side of the wing creating uh, the drag from one side of the plane so for that for factory made airplane you had to go through the special tests uh, for the scammers, for the conditions, and then they can approve uh, this usage. For some airplane, you have even special mounts, let's say for uh, aerobatic airplanes, there are even special mounts sometimes for the GoPros, for the cameras. So for this, it was a little bit mishandling of this uh, maintenance, uh, maintenance manuals from the J Mr. Jacobs uh, side. Happening, how's it going? My name is Trevor Jacob. We are here at the end of the runway. Gonna go fly the 1940 Taylor Craft up to Mammoth and uh, do some paragliding, do some snowboarding. It's gonna be a super good time. I got my best friend Johnny Strange as ashes with. He said, I would do some paragliding and snowboarding. So I admit he put the paraglider inside the airplane, so the snowboard, and he said that he will throw the ashes from. Um, uh, from the airplane probably but actually throwing objects uh, from airplane is against the rules in california we are going to go paraglide off of one of his favorite mountains up in the sierra nevadas and uh, spread some of those so i'm super grateful he'll be joining us got to give a shout out to the ridge wallet thank you to the ridge oh it's crazy Cra crazy integration so you say uh, like very sad story there is the video on his channel as i said to you so sad story how his friend lost his life actually it is quite sad my friends but he put in this sandwich pocket uh, the ashes of his friend and immediately after saying so uh, about this mountain that he liked immediately put the integration the advertisement and uh, that's crazy that's cringy and not good jacob mr jacob what were you thinking about for sponsoring this video it's in my pockets at all times to get 10 percent off at checkout and uh you'll be stoked you did it my friends actually he cut this part in his video because first of all it is cringy and one of the thing this um, advertisement was removed not only by jacob but by the company itself they wanted not to go into this uh, trouble with all that uh, mr jacob has uh, right now the run up and we'll be on our way soon so much love we'll see you in the air okay to go The plane is, I see that this plane is maintained, um, well there is uh, no structural damage to the airframe as I see, um, the fuselage skin is quite clean, it is nice, so the airplane I would say it's in nice condition my friends, at least visually. What is interesting about this plane that it doesn't have any kind of electrical system strangely yeah so it has magneto so first uh, you have to have someone on the ground to start up the engine so basically you hand rotating the propeller to start it up and you have just the spark plugs working probably there are no any radius for the radius you need to have at least batteries uh, and what i see that mr jacob is wearing the headset that is not plugged in so he's screaming and later on you'll see that it's not plugged in into any kind of uh, radio station because this aircraft probably it doesn't have any kind of of radio station here's the air Warsness certificate uh, on the left side of mr jacob and yeah you can probably try to find the debris 
uh, of the airplane and try to figure out to try to find out this certificate and to really understand whether this airplane was airworthy or not because from what I see from internal part I don't really sure I'm not really sure that um, it should be like that my friend so everything was removed or this airplane should be like that what is interesting is this camera just behind the mr. Jacobs uh, back so it was filming on the time of departure but if we'll see later in a cruise flight it was turned off and this camera will give us any kind of clues of what was happening to the engine because there are probably engine instruments for any kind of airplanes and we'll see if there is the oil temperature high oil temperature low fuel pressure etc so what caused actually the engine to fail to fail and here we have the fuel selector valve uh, it's in strange position it shouldn't be like that my friends um, and I would say it's uh, not okay not okay for commercially made airplane if it's uh, if it uh, was like experimental airplane I would say yeah, even for experiment, experimental airplane it's uh, kind of ugly and dodgy so I wouldn't fly with that fuel selector uh, just uh, waving around so it's totally uh, I would say it's not safe to have it like that uh, stretch but that gives us the clue that probably mr. Jacob got this plane just for one fly so he needed to fly on this airplane only once see he is flying over some kind of hills I'm not sure whether there are mountains but we have some of the houses uh, around and some flat terrain that I would sure this airplane could have landed on and I'm not sure I'm not really sure whether the geographical location of this particular place and the particular and the place where he lost his engine but there was one youtuber who flown his uh, also we call them tail draggers the airplane types like that with the tail wheel and big uh, wheels um, on the main landing gear so he flown his uh, airplane it's uh, not uh, this similar type of the it's not the same type of the airplane but very similar and he also did uh, quite nice reviews of this video whether it's hawks or not actually and I really find his channel very entertaining and he flown to the nearest airport and still had around 3,000 feet of altitude that gives us the clue that even with glide ratio 1 to 8 which this aircraft probably have for sure uh, you can fly towards the airport and flying overhead this high terrain area you need to be sure you need to be aware of the places where you can uh, glide to without the engine your airplane turns into the glider and for single engine aircraft it's very crucial to understand where you are and where you should land in case of engine failure bum, bum. We see that the engine is working fine, but he is already searching for something. I can see the flat terrain behind him, and the door is open. So it's uh, it gives us the clue uh, that probably he it was some kind of stunt. Then he opened the door, he shut down the engine, and he just jumped out of the airplane. Uh, here's the GoPro just near to the fuel line, <laughs> and there, of course, there was there was the fuel inside the fuel tanks uh, which are in the wings so let's see what happens so he turns so first he was searching for something and then the engine shut it down 
and the propeller is still windmilling uh, but we do not hear the exhaust of the airplane it means that he shut it down the engine or it was the engine failure but i do not believe in that and the door is already open so according to procedures what you need to do in case of engine failure you need to reduce your pitch reduce your pitch to maintain um, the glide speed for this airplane it should be around 60 knots so with this 60 knot you it's your like optimum speed where you can glide the airplane one to eight one to nine uh, glide ratio for these tail draggers um, what he does in that case he pulled the stick he pulled the yoke a little bit uh, we call it maybe it's a steering so he pulled up I don't know why he did it uh, my idea that he pulled this control wheel to show that the propeller uh, that the engine is dead for the cameras because uh, then you have the uh, low speed airflow into the airplane uh, it cannot uh, windmill the propeller because you have uh, the friction from the cylinders the friction from the inside mechanisms of the engine so your uh, stick will be stuck like this uh, without the air going into it so that's what he was going to do so he reduces the airspeed just to show that the engine is dead Okay, we see that it's really mountainous terrain. So you see what he, what is? Uh, I will show you once. Again. So he's pulling, pulling, pulling to show that dead stick, and yeah, we'll have it. Here we go. Uh, dead stick. And the engine is not working for sure. And what's his? What he's doing next? The door is open, as you see. <laughs> Open and he is preparing to jump out of the plane. <laughs> Quite interesting, uh, not standard procedure. Well, according to every kind of manuals, what you need to do, like establish the glide ratio, as I told you before, and then you need to troubleshoot the problem. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, you establish the glide uh, speed and you search for the places where you can land. You go to the place, you just turn your airplane to some kind of space where you can possibly land. There were uh, some of the spaces, even in this mountain terrain, you will see uh, later on. And uh, the next, you need to troubleshoot the problem. Uh, you need to find out uh, what has happened. The, if the stick, <laughs> if the propeller is uh, rotating, it means that the engine. Uh, crankshaft is not stuck the camshaft is also so what happened is it's in lack of fuel supply or it's in lack of uh, spark so two of the things uh, this engine it doesn't have the starter so what you need to do is just to increase the airspeed select the ignition on and try to understand whether you have the fuel supply I don't know the procedures of this specific airplane but it's like a low way out if you have the parachute it's a nice thing my friends but even flying at this high altitude it's very early to drop from the plane try to figure out what is happening try to like use the common sense what what is actually happening to the airplane probably it is the only way out uh, that you should uh, drop out of the plane with the parachute uh, but first try to find out what caused the engine problem and try maybe to land this airplane safely because then you get out of the plane with your chute you'll you will leave this airplane on its own and there were quite a lot of campings in that area and yeah i like campings i like hiking and just imagine then you hike in a forest and the airplane just coming towards your tent uh, for example or there were some of the houses in the area as well so i don't think it is a good idea so we need to 
try to land the airplane and then you're lower if you have this kind of uh, skydiving rig <laughs> by the way no one flies with those uh, skydiving rigs my friends pilots if they do fly aerobatics if they do fly with skydivers they have a special shoots for that uh, specially designed they take less space and these uh, skydiving rigs they have extra safety shoots uh, if something goes wrong with one uh, you have uh, extras with normal pilot shoes you just have a single shoot and yeah very interesting let's watch this guy just coming out of the airplane with the also lots of gopros uh, we have right oh my god i think it was stunt my friends so he's searching Holy and i'm over the mountains and i get out of asia now I'm over the mountains, have the engine out, but do not panic. It's who give who gave you the license, my friend? Oh my god, I would never like to fly with this kind of the pilot. So what I see is probably this is uh, part of his headset, so it's not connected to the airplane and uh, he is going to jump and from this perspective he is doing the right job um, pitching up the plane so he immediately started to pitch up the plane to show uh, probably the propeller stop and after that he pitched up even more to reduce the airspeed of the airplane uh, so it could be comfortable to jump from it there is also a trimmer so he didn't trim up the airplane i wonder why probably he pitched it down just not to cause the airplane to fly away very uh, for a very long distance you'll see later on yeah, usually we fly general aviation airplanes much lower than at this kind of altitude. I think there is more than 10,000 feet or something like that, probably near to 10,000 feet. And uh, there is the airway in that area. I looked for the for the chart and the minimum and root altitude for that is 9000 feet I'm not really sure whether it's okay whether it's a clue whether it's stunt or not but still we have this kind of high altitude at this altitude my friends you can you can easily take the correct decision uh, where to land the airplane So here my friends is it is not the perfect spot to land but still we have some river washes around uh, there could be some kind of gravel or sand where you can easily land this airplane I would say not easily but at least you may try you may go circle around this area try to understand whether i would like to land there or not or whether i should jump from the plane but still you have this option and it's what we see on the cameras because uh, maybe there were many more options just uh, you need to glide a little bit further uh, so far i'm not sure but still we have these flat uh, parts and flat parts near to the river washes and uh, yeah it's stall airplane my friends it's short takeoff landing performance uh, airplane and it can land at the stall speed of uh, let's say 40 knots uh, it's not heavy airplane it's not fully loaded airplane so it can maintain minimum speed and the less speed you have the faster you will stop and the less landing distance you need my friends so this is totally wrong actions to do he said i'll show you what pilots should do uh, in case of engine failure in the mountain region something like that in his disclaimer but I see nothing uh, really was done according to the book uh, not it was done very strange and what I think is what I know what I see it's a uh, wrong actions yeah. <laughs> very funny 
to see this handset. As you see, the airplane is gaining the airspeed. The propeller starts to rotate. So, I think if the if you turn on the ignition at that point, you will just start up the engine. <laughs> okay, he opened the chute. He was skydiving for a while, free fall, and now he's controlling his chute. It's not a good place, even though there are no no any uh, no any trees, but still, it's not good. Okay, we have the plane there, my friends. This probably uh, I'm not sure uh, for 100 percent, but he films this um, part with his phone. That's what I think. Um, because I'm a YouTuber, I film also aviation-related videos. And what I think this probably is not filmed on GoPro or it was zoomed in very well with a good quality. Pity plane. So the plane overflies this uh, river washes. Uh, there is pretty much good area around here where you can land the plane and you can approach from this side and the flat area goes on the right well there there's pretty much okay area especially on the right there uh, on top uh, where you can land the airplane well I think it's uh, quite I would choose this place my friends I would choose 100% uh, if uh, there were many many mountains around so this is almost I would die I'm sure I wouldn't die the plane could sustain some of the minor damages that's it but I would survive and this, this plane just goes uh, so of course this video was cut and uh, I want to sh to see more. It was cut, cut, cut at some parts, and it's just going to the mountain where is that picture? Because I would like to own this kind of plane, my friends. I like general vision. Oh my god! Just crushed. somewhere in the bushes why so he clearly oh my god uh, just uh, want to scroll uh, scroll back okay here's the nice spot over here the guy is the skydiver why he choose to land in these bushes and why he didn't choose to land at this perfect spot near two river washes just into the bushes, you know. Maybe he's not good at landing his shoot. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get me out of this. Yeah, it's quite risky. If you pl uh, if you plan this, uh, wow, well, that planning is not good. Uh, you shouldn't have landed into this kind of uh, bushes. You can really. Uh, be hurt you can broke something you can damage with this uh, branches your eyes everything not smart not smart um, yeah come on come on my clue here is he wanted to get closer to the airplane so he chose to land and the same mountain and the same mountain sign because it goes on the top here and yeah probably it was like that well where the hell am i gonna land a freaking plane i'm gonna die that's why i always freaking fly with a parachute no phone service uh, he said that's why i always fly with freaking parachute but in the rest of his video he uh, flies without it very strange so he lies so he goes somewhere Freaking cut everywhere. Ah, ow. 
Uh, yeah, my friends, surviving in that area is not easy um, because uh, you probably have luck in water in that area. It's quite a deserted place and uh, you have this kind of dried out bushes uh, that may cut your body, your skin and everything. So it's unpleasant. Uh, there are lots of dust and probably letting near to that river on a chute will be the great idea where you can at least drink uh, the water. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Nasty. Oh. I've called for help multiple times. I don't have any service. And by the way, that myth that 911 works and you don't have phone service is total BS. Uh, well, yeah, there's the great problem here. And uh, I think if he planned it, he would, uh, he certainly had some kind of uh, backup plan. He probably noticed someone and the FAA should, uh, should put attention on that. Uh, but it looks like he really had some kind of ancient feather and he was really struggling. What drives me to some clues that it is also stunned that he is carrying his uh, parachute with him. That costs a lot of money actually. So if it's like a death or life situation, would you carry the parachute with you my friends? I don't think so. I would probably leave it there and I would go to where people should live or maybe nearby a road uh, however you may use some kind of the gear from this shoot afterwards for your survival you don't know how long you should spend in this uh, desert, quite desert place my friends even though there are some plants uh, but really it may be helpful it's not if it's not really heavy I, I don't know uh, maybe I would took it with me um, well I'm not sure I'm not sure with that I spot the plane I see it down there. Oh my god. Oh, he went to the plane. I would uh, went to the plane in case of uh, the same scenario. In only in case I would have something really precious in the plane itself, like water, maybe some food uh, or equipment that can increase my chances for survival. Oh. Oh. The plane destroyed. Wow. It's really no go. My friends, uh, there was uh, fuel inside the fuel tanks. Um, that area would simply got into the fire, my friends, if, we, if the airplane would just burst into flames. Of course, there would be a great fire around this area. And because you see there's uh, dry plants around, of course, they would got, uh, they would catch a fire. And probably Mr. Jacob would face more problems in his life afterwards. So he was really lucky that this airplane uh, didn't got any fire upon crushing. Oh, yeah. yeah, pity plane. Oh, there's literally release. nothing. No anything no water i had a water jug in the back no water i had a water jug in the back he said but i'll try to search for it maybe it, he, he couldn't reach the baggage compartment he got uh, probably because of this wreckage you know and there should be his uh, paraglider and his snowboard Oh my gosh, Or board. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> Strange. <sighs> oh, I don't even know, man. Thank you. God, thank you, universe. Thank you, higher power, for watching over me. I'm going to start walking out of here. Bum, bum. And uh, then he walks out of the steam and he, he is walking, he is walking, he is walking, the sun goes down and uh, at some point he drink from the river or something and finally someone met him and after that he went to the mountain he wanted, yeah, he got some, he, has, he says it's some kind of poisoned, uh, poisonous uh, oak there 
and he went to the scene uh, where he wanted to throw away his friend's ashes and he actually glided on his um, paraglide there quite interesting I thought he took it with him on a plane but here he's gliding on this uh, paraglider kind of strange situation my friends so there are several questions uh, on this uh, video I just wrote them down while I was watching this uh, so the door was open before uh, the engine fell <laughs> which is very strange uh, no standard procedures were done um, no non-standard procedures sorry were done so he didn't increase the speed for the glide or maintain the speed he didn't reduce the pitch he pulled up uh, to stop the propeller then he jumped and no troubleshooting of the feather and no choice uh, no any uh, attempt to search for the place where it's possible to land to glide the airplane down without the engine it's nothing extraordinary my friends well it is but it's nothing really really special about losing one engine on single engine airplane you always need to be prepared for that uh, so he wears the skydiving rig as I said to you it's very unusual even in the cockpit of Boeing 737 I cannot imagine me staying in the cockpit uh, with that um, <laughs> with that gear uh, it's very hard uh, even in Boeing 737 there is not enough place uh, to stay with that rig I also wonder why he hiked to the plane wearing his uh, skydiving rig all the way along and maybe I think he just put the cameras he has multiple cameras installed on the airplane so probably he put it there in the back uh, maybe he roped it and just it's easier to <laughs> to take it with you in that rig uh, selfie stick in emergency well very strange actually very strange situation where you have lots of cameras but something uh, happens uh, something dramatic happens uh, to uh, the airplane that uh, also very interesting that this airplane uh, he bought this airplane one month ago and it is still wasn't registered on his name and he never told about this plane in his social media so probably he bought this plane just for this purpose the Santanis airport was within the area of gliding of this airplane well it depends my friends on the wind there could be different uh, things but uh, the guy on YouTube as I told you he flown a particular flight he just put the engine back to idle he also flown on a tail dragger so similar characteristics as this airplane has or had and he flown to Santon's airport and he overflown it at 3,000 feet that's quite a lot so even with a headwind he you would probably uh, you would not probably but 99.9% uh, you would uh, reach it to Santis, uh, Santanes airport the river washes or you may call them river badges uh, as I showed you in this video uh, almost perfect sports to land the airplane uh, if we're speaking about the high terrain area I would try my best to land there and I'm sure I would survive also the big question when the airplane was airworthy or not because we cannot just fly an uh, airplane without airworthiness certificate there was the certificate inside of the cockpit as I show you but we cannot see the date we cannot see any kind of information on it on a video uh, so probably it's a good uh, thing to get to the place and collect the debris but uh, I heard some of the rumors that actually mr. Jacob um, he rented the helicopter to fly to the scene and he collected some of the debris that could provide some evidence to FAA I don't know whether it's true or not but uh, probably it's not a good thing to do in his case bum, bum shut down mr. Jacob and what I think my friends I'm almost sure I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this was planned stunt it was hoax it was done on purpose by mr. Jacob uh, just to, to reach some views um, to reach the hype and actually he succeeded if you look at the Google Trends 
uh, you may search in YouTube Google Trends if you put his name uh, what's his name Trevor <laughs> Trevor Jacob uh, so you'll see that attention he got in the Google search is quite high and predicted to be even higher so people nowadays they're searching for some kind of sensation they want to create some kind of sensation uh, that is why it's going crazy actually with this YouTube Instagram etc so people would like to see something really unique something really touching Whoa, my I crashed my plane something really uh, outstanding right and there are some of the guys like mr. Jacob who are willing to be popular on that kind of hype uh, from my uh, perspective my friends what I think that with these hypes you cannot be very 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 popular you can hype on some wave but then you lose you hype you lose you hype you lose and what it's some kind of sickness because if you hyped like I crashed my plane uh, there should be the video that could hype even more than previous one if you look at the for example mr beast channel one of the popular channels on youtube at the beginning mr beast used to give out like hundred dollars thousand dollars now he's given out uh, one million dollars if you win some kind of his games so people are eagerly watching and mr jacob also wanted some kind of hype there lots of stories on his channel <laughs> i think lots of them they're just uh, lie uh, uh, saying honestly and there is that story that he flown with his dog and he, the dog interfered with the flight controls and <laughs> oh my god it's crazy story my friends probably the dog just didn't want to fly with him <laughs> Uh, so he exaggerating you know he exaggerating like most extreme I crush my friend no it's uh, it's totally wrong doing my friends uh, because at some point like this probably is the point for mr. Jacob probably he could even go to jail so he may lose his license and also he could face some legal charges uh, from the persecution because the airplane the uncontrolled airplane uh, could land almost everywhere in the area yes it's one of the least uh, popular populated area uh, of that region let's say but still there as I said to you there are lots of campings and there were some of the buildings that this airplane could have landed into so it's really reckless if it's planned I'm sure almost sure that it's planned mr. Jacob should lose his license as a youtuber as a pilot I don't want to see this shadow of mr. Jacob on me because people would see this and would say oh pilot youtubers are stupid or something like that I don't want to see this happening in aviation my friends and also because of this case FAA might come up with some ideas will restrict the uh, using of the cameras uh, inside of general aviation planes will restrict that will restrict this so I see this as a um, bad thing my friends because uh, the general aviation in the United States it's still uh, still has freedom right and with these kind of cases this kind of mr. Jacobs they may restrict uh, the freedom of other aviation aviators that are not even involved in this um, kind of accidents and they are doing great job filming their videos uh, very bad thing my friends but I think it's my reaction on that video my friends what do you need to do on this channel as usual first just like this video after that subscribe to my channel and finally ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time Pam, pam.